All right. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Armin? Good, good. Great to be here with you. All right. Do you mind telling us um, as much as you can um, who you are and what are we talking about today? Well, who I am? Well, I'm an Iranian uh, ex-Muslim, but Mm -hmm. I'm here to talk to you about you know, the things you've been doing, desecrating the Quran and other texts. And Mm -hmm. I'm here to disagree with you on Mm -hmm. what you're doing. All right. But you as an atheist ex-Muslim? Yes. Okay. I guess you can say agnostic atheist, but but that's that's an irrelevant... Yeah. Yeah. Agnostic atheist? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and do you want to do you want to give any more background about yourself, or you just want to jump right into the, your arguments? I guess we can just jump into the arguments. All right, go on. Tell yeah. me why I'm wrong. Why all right, so, uh, so, so first of all, I, I want to say that I'm not here to sort of like debunk the whole thing, and you know? I'm not here to tell you that you're like all the arguments you're making are wrong. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think most of the arguments you're making are right, but I just oh, don't think great. Let's, okay, good. Then we can finish this. <laughs> uh, so, but but uh, I just don't think those are enough to to sort of justify doing it. Okay, okay, okay. I've heard you talk about normalizing dissent, you know, crossing red lines, sort of breaking taboos. Those are basically your most you know most vocal arguments. As far I as have I a huge huh. list of reasons why I do it, but yeah, those are some right. Of them. But those are those those are the ones that that I was able to sort of. Mm. Uh, yeah, and that's what I heard from you, and I think you know that that's you have a point there. there there's there's some value in there, you know. I can't mm-hmm. disagree with that. Okay, normalizing descent, you know, crossing red lines, that mm-hmm. that sounds good. Are not it's, all red lines arbitrary red lines that does doesn't prevent harm. There are some red lines that I red lines that prevent actual harm. I, I agree with. Right. So yeah, like you know, shouting like fire in a in a in a movies. Right. That's that's a red line you don't want to cross because people will get killed. But to be honest with you, I think this red line will also cause harm. And it does cause harm. Now, obviously not from you, the one who does it, but from the people who are very reactionary. And uh, well, ex- sorry, the, I'm talking about the net effect of the harm, but okay, go on, continue. All right. So the people that, I mean, I guess you haven't gotten like too viral with this thing. Other people in the past have done this sort of thing. I know you've gotten pretty viral, but in this sort of like a mainstream, like billions of people seeing it sort of thing. Mm. I don't remember if you remember in 2010, I believe there was this uh, American priest who wanted to burn a lot of Qurans. He got like mainstream mm. media attention and, and a lot of people in the Muslim world, you know, went to the streets. They were, you know, Dozens of people got killed. Mm-hmm. So much crap happened. I'm, I'm not sure if you if you're aware of that. Probably Dozens more. of people got killed. I don't. I think it was in 2010. Yeah, but I don't remember people Ter- getting Terry killed. Jones. Hmm. Interesting. I don't have the the numbers on that one, but that's. I'm, well, sort, yeah, sort I remember point. that guy. But how, what was his name again? Terry Jones, I believe. I didn't really pull this off. I'm just sort of going from memory. But what uh, I'm saying is that what you have done and what others have done have not sort of grabbed that level of attention yet, thankfully. Nobody but got killed. Nobody. That's yeah. interesting. Am I wrong about this? But yeah, I mean, there was the, the Salman Rushdie th- incident a few decades ago. Yeah, and, nobody and got one, killed. In that one... People got killed, especially the translators and stuff. Oh, Sam, the Salman Rushdie book? Yeah. Uh, so, his, you're against, so you think Salman Rushdie should no, have... No, actually, you know what? That one was too much. Uh, that, that one was too much? No, Salman the reaction Rushdie? to that one was too much. Because oh, so, I, I so tried you think, reading... Hmm. You think some of these reactions are not too much? Well, they're, okay. Let me they're sort of give much. my opinion. Okay, about right. this. My opinion is that there should be no reaction. People should just see it and be like, oh, okay. Sort of like mm-hmm. how, how Christians react to, yeah, you know. They didn't used reason. to. They didn't used to. They do right. it now. Guess right. how that happened. Guess how Guess how that happened. So, okay. Um, I see your point, but people, real people die and people get harmed when this happens. Um, not Not anymore. No, you don't think uh, doing this is sort of causing a backlash, violent backlash that actually, actually gets people harm? Haven't you seen the results? It actually has ended the backlash. 
what has ended the backlash? Like how many people now burn the Quran? Where is the reactions? It's become it's become like normal. You think it's normal now to, to burn the Quran? Like you don't think it's people way- get killed? I mean, we have been doing. Have you not seen our hashtag uh, burn the Quran challenge in Persian and Persian on uh, Persian accounts and Jumhuriya uh, uh, You saw how many people burned the Quran. Iranians right, burned the Quran with their, own Iran, with their own identities. Why well, did it with my identity? See? I, right. I burned the Quran on YouTube. No, how many people died when I burned the Quran? I mean, people don't even pay attention anymore. Right, but, but this I, guy, think, I think you should actually be careful about your your safety. To be honest with you, I mean, especially no, even in Canada. Look at okay, hold. Uh, this is not you don't, you don't think at, you should be careful about like. Let, okay, but think about this. In tw- when did this guy did this? The Terry Jones guy, right? It was to twenty ten. I believe twenty ten. That was major news when this guy wanted to burn the Quran, right? Right, but now, the thing is, wait, it's not me, that. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. But now, I mean, like you said, when I burned the Quran, it didn't even become mainstream news. It's like, like it's just like it's not a, not even a big thing anymore, right? I mean, think well, about drawing Muhammad, right? Drawing, mm-hmm. drawing Muhammad used to be a major, major like used to get major backlash, right? right. Now it's turned into an annual event, and Muslims are not even reacting to it that much anymore, right? How did that happen? How do you think that happened? So you're saying because a lot of people have done it or a number of people have done it, it it's made it normal. But I don't think it's been normal. I mean, Charlie Abdo uh, attacks in France. It's uh, not a binary were, thing. Were, were recent, you know, hundreds it's, of people got killed that year. It's, I think. Not, it's not a binary thing. It's not like... I'm not saying it's a binary thing either. Yeah, but you're saying I'm saying it's because the reaction is much less, and you're giving me examples of some reactions. I'm telling you the reaction it's not is that a- less. I mean, the Charlie Abdo attacks were pretty major, and it's not that you know back in history. It's 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 2016, I believe, or 2015. It's still a lot less. The backlash is a lot less compared to. Um, could, could what do you think would have happened if I did the burning of the Quran and put it on YouTube ten years ago? Well, I, I think the, the backlash would have been more. But here's the thing. I there don't think go. the backlash is is less because people are getting used to it. I don't think anyone of the people who would do sort of those attacks would get used to that such a thing. I, follow, I guess maybe when they I, die I, off and new generations come. But, but, but hear me out. I think they're not uh, doing as much of a backlash because the media is not paying as much of an attention. So maybe media has gotten used to it, not the people yeah. who do the attacks. No, you know, talk if about you know it. Terry Jones thing in 2010, you can just sort of see like everyone covering it. It was sort of like the the, the top news of like every news agency. Now you're doing it, and it's they don't care as much. So, they don't care so much because the there's no reaction. To, the news doesn't. The news follows the things that people care about. They care about audiences. When they see people care about it, they follow it. When they see people don't care about it, they have their fingers on the pulse of what people want to see more than the rest. They have like the research departments on this, right? They have entire yeah. team. What? Wait. They have entire teams dedicated to try to figure this out. They're not just covering it because they want to cover it. They're covering it because they know people care about it. They stop covering it when they see people don't care about it. One thing, right? The reaction has been a lot, a lot less. Okay, and this is because of normalization. I and I and again, I do follow a a lot. I do see how the narrative has changed among uh, Muslims. The Muslims were like, okay, this is. um, It used to be the narrative. Mostly, the narrative was like, we have to protect the honor of our prophet. We cannot let this go. We cannot be look weak. Uh, Be made to look weak. We need to. We need to. plants fear in their hearts so that they never do this again and when it backfired when they see you know if here's the problem okay if it works if they say we need to intimidate them we need to scare them so that they do not do this again you know that is dangerous if it works if that works they're not going to stop using it for just me blaspheming against the Quran or desecrating the Quran. If that method works, it works in other places as well. And it shouldn't work. And if you let it work, it's you who are encouraging that behavior. By demonstrating that it doesn't work, 
we are discouraging that behavior. And I've noticed that they have noticed that it doesn't work. The new strategy that is being advertised is that these are we are weak, pathetic people that have nothing to say about the Quran. And that's why we're desecrating it, because we have no logical arguments. And the best thing to do to us is to ignore us and not give us the attention that we so desperately seek. That's the method that they're now advertising, most of them. And that shows a shift in their, in their, in their strategy. Okay, and again, so they're going from a strategy of intimidation. A lot of them are switching from a strategy of intimidation and fear, and you know, outright promoting violence to another to a strategy of ignoring and letting these people just die, there, like die in their own hate or something like that, right? And so, so it has worked. It does work. You rewarding them by giving into intimidation, you are encouraging that behavior. You would be encouraging that behavior, not the people that make the make the strategy back. There's a reason. Okay, I'm not gonna say the T word. Okay, please, you, you don't say it as well because YouTube doesn't like it, right? But there's a reason why every, every government says we don't negotiate with the Terries. We're gonna call it Terries, okay? Uh, we mm -hmm. don't negotiate with Terry's because even if that in that specific in, in situation, if it makes sense, like, guys, if we negotiate with them here right now, we could avoid some harm right now. OK, in the long term, in the long run, you are proving that their model and the strategy works. And that way you're going to cause more harm. All right. So. Can I respond to that? Y yes, of course. Go ahead. All right. So there's a few points. One is you're saying that if if you sort of uh, go back and like not do it again, you're basically giving them a point and they feel victory and they think, oh, we can stop them just by, you know, blowing them up. Uh, don't don't use those words. YouTube doesn't like it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, there is... There's something to that, but here's the thing. You're not really trying to influence these extremists, right? The people who are willing to sort of uh, do the T things, as you say, we're not supposed, those are not the type of people I think um, you're doing this for. Like, those are not the type of people you're influencing with these videos. That's not your target audience, I assume, right? Like, this is not the people we are, like, creating these videos for and doing these. You're yeah. dealing with like a majority of people in the Muslim world who are not ever going to do any of those things or not going to kill anyone for any of those things, but they might feel, you know, offend, offended, or they might feel that it is justified for someone else to, to, you know, kill it, kill that person. You see my point? Like these are the type of people you want sort of either to be on the extremist side or on your side, especially in the Persian YouTube that you, I, I'm sure, you know, you're, putting a lot of time for the Iranians in that, you know, in that context, you've got a majority or at least a plurality of people who still identify as Muslim. I think it's majority, but there was that, you know, poll recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you sort of want these people to be in your side, even if the current government, you know, is, is, you know, there's a revolution or whatever, and it's gone. You still want, you know, these normal people, to, to, to you want to be able to live with them and and sort of mm -hmm. share politics and government with them mm -hmm. and you don't want these people to, to sort of go extreme and be fundamentalists and start you know doing some of those activities that we don't we don't want to name and doing these sort of stuff I don't think is going to help you know at some point we're, we're just gonna have to like stick only to conversation and sort of go away from any of uh, you know, any sort of insults and those kinds of things, that me, which Thanks. you don't think it's an insult. Mm, no. Well, I've seen you insult people who didn't agree with uh, this method. Yeah. I Individuals. Guess. Right, right. Not groups of people. Right. No, I didn't mean, well, mm. they might take it as an insult. You might not mean it to be an insult. And I mean, you can have a conversation about it, but if mm. the people take it as an insult, it still has the same effect, right? And you don't want to no. have that effect. You it's don't want problem. You don't well, want I'm to gonna, alienate those people, do you? Well, I'm going to wait for you to finish. For, I, I'm taking notes so I can respond to you. Okay. Well, but, I guess I should do that too, but <laughs> I try to remember what you say. Uh, so I think we want to 
sort of have an alliance with these more moderate or liberal Muslims in, in, in Iran or anywhere else. And sort of these things make it very difficult to do that. I mean, you are trying to have conversation, you're trying to influence these people, but when you when there's a clip of you doing that and, and these people are seeing it, that might be the only thing they see from you. And they're just gonna like reduce you to that like 30 seconds clip of you desecrating mm -hmm. the Quran or the other thing. Rather than, you know, see you as an author, as a podcaster, as someone who's trying to influence, you know, thought in a in a community. Okay. All right. I, I think that's... All right. Okay. Should I respond? Uh-huh. Go ahead. All right. So the extremists are also part of my target audience, right? So they are. They definitely are. And we have a lot of people that went from extremism to be on full-on anti-theist atheist right now uh, we have had people in our community in our audience that went from wanting to join isis i'm not going to say that the name because youtube doesn't like that right to being now a full-on anti-theist atheist right so they are definitely our, our target um as well also with the people that could potentially become extremists but um whether we're pushing them towards extremism or not i think actually we are doing the opposite uh because we are showing how pathetic and weak the attempts of extremists are and how massively it backfires every time they try to intimidate us to silence us they shoot themselves in the foot and they get 10 times of what uh, whatever they were trying to uh, stop a hundred times or a thousand times sometimes and they look weak and pathetic and they say like well I'm not going to join the side that keeps failing and failing at silencing people and you know getting them you know so by by looking by making them look weak and pathetic we're making it less even among people that haven't joined them yet but might join them um, I think we are we are making them look pathetic to them, right? Um, with regards to people that I who, are, who will remain Muslim or will remain religious, but we want them to be able to work with us and work on our side, uh, I do not think that this. Um, I don't think that that friendship or that cooperation should be conditional on us. Uh, giving into blasphemy rules. Right, um, we tolerate Muslims um, and willing to not only just work with them but befriend them, even though they are promoting or legitimizing or accepting the authority of a book that a book that says. I, I would deserve to burn forever and screaming pain for eternity. And books that says that I should be beheaded simply for changing my opinion. A book that says women can be captured as slaves in war. A book that says wife beating is not just okay, but is demanded by God. I tolerate Muslims and even accept them as friends, and I do not make that conditional on them rejecting these ideas. I do not make it conditional on that. And yet, they want if they want me, my friendship, or my partnership, or my cooperation with them, conditional on me, not advocating for the same level of vile, disgusting, crap against them not not anything even close to that the standard is that i have to respect a piece of paper no you do not make to, you do not get to make that condition i'm ready to work with you i'm ready to be your friend if you do not like me desecrating the quran look away you do not get to demand you can you do not get to set conditions on how, what I con what content I make for you to accept me as an, as an ally. It's that, it, that conditional friendship is not friendship at all. For you to, to put me in a box and says, this is how you get to criticize Islam and this is not how you get to criticize Islam. Only then I will accept you as an atheist that I will tolerate. That level of tolerance is not tolerance at all. 
we we don't want atheists to be just accepted conditional uncertain si level of silence we want atheists and anti-theists to be accepted as part of society with the full freedom to express themselves the way they want as long as they're not harming anybody and that removing that condition is part of our demands right again we tolerate them we tolerate them even though they promote and legitimize, legitimize and accept way more vile disgusting um, views than us just burning a piece of paper that does not harm anybody okay um Oh, also, with regards to going back a little bit to the extremist um, people, I feel like it's kind of like a funnel, right? Uh, most like the, the radical ones are a very small fraction of the main, most mainstream Muslims, right? But again, I do think that by reaching out to the mainstream and, you know, in, uh, impacting their behavior, uh, we are basically putting a limitation of how effective this funnel is, right? So the extremists, even though they are a small percentage of m the vast majority of Muslims, if we reach out to the most Muslims, I think we are disrupting that the process of the radicalization. I think we are. Um, not, you know, by we, I mean like a lot of people. Okay, I'm not, I, I'm not exaggerating the influence that we have here. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't think... Um, if somebody sees, uh, again, uh, another thing we're trying to communicate is that what the content as a Muslim, okay, if, a, if there's a certain content that you do not like, it is your responsibility to avoid that content. That's another thing we're teaching people, okay? It's not the responsibility of the content creator to dance around the things that you do not like. It's your, it's, we have nothing that we produce, desecrating the Quran, burning the Quran, spitting on the Quran, nothing like that has ever been forced on you. If you are seeing it, it's either because you came to us or you're not managing your feet properly. You could simply block anybody that is showing that kind of content. You, know, you decide who you follow. You decide. And now, and now I'm actually doing trigger warnings, right? Now I'm actually even doing, to make this point, how, how you still get offended. If I desecrate the Quran, I'm going to try to see, this is something new I'm experimenting with. I'm going to announce to Muslim, to anybody Muslim watching that I'm about to desecrate the Quran. This is your chance to look away or go away, right? So I'm experimenting with that. Um, another thing uh, mentioned is like, a lot of people say like, Armin, a lot of Muslims will not be able, would not talk to you if this is what they see from you. They're not going to want to talk to you. They want to go. They don't want to uh, have anything to do with your content. But my experience has been the exact opposite. Should I sort of uh, respond before because just, the points just, are just, too many. Let's, 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 yeah. One, one last thing, right? I have experienced the exact opposite. Going through years and years of talking about why the Quran is wrong, why Islam is wrong, and talking respectfully, and blah, blah. Muslims like, yeah, whatever. This guy doesn't know what you're talking about. Desecrate the Quran one time. Do an Allah's gay sign one time. I have been flooded, flooded in my messages on Facebook, on my email, on my Twitter with Muslims. A lot of them is just like death threats or rape threats or insults or stuff like that. But there's also a lot of people like, brother, can I talk to you? Maybe you just don't understand Islam. Let me teach you. Let me talk to you. Oh, I'm sorry about all these other people that are talking, that are sending you those. That's not true, Islam. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you why Islam is good. I get so many people wanting to talk to me. Because of this, so it's the I, so people saying like, oh, Armin, who if if Muslims see that you're desecrating the Quran, you just lost an audience. They don't want to talk to you anymore. It has been so astronomically on the other side. Look, this has been the most wrong take on this. All of this, right? It's so on the other side. So many. I don't more think that's Muslims. the case. But I'll, yeah, I'll wait for it. I'm telling you that that's the case. I'm telling you that that's what happens. All right, can I've I respond? Yeah, go on. 
So, okay, so I guess I'll start with your last point. I think what's happening is, ju is just that you're becoming viral and you're becoming more famous. So, so, so literally more number of people see your name and obviously when a bigger pool of people know about you, a bigger number of people will want to talk to you. That doesn't mean that you burning the Quran or desecrating the Quran is actually making people like more likely to want to talk to you. I don't think that that's not, that doesn't follow. What follows is that you become more famous so more people know about you. So more people want to talk to you. Like there, are, if you were to somehow figure out a way to become famous in another way, the, the same consequence will happen. More people will want to talk to you if you have more, you know, subscribers. If you have, if you have more viewers, you know, you just your profile gets bigger, so more people want to talk to you. That obviously, I'm not going to deny that, but you make it sound like you desecrating the Quran is the reason why they're now willing to talk to you. Yeah, it but, is. And I, Oh, you think that's the case? Yeah, I, I have had people with bigger following than me uh, that do not use my style. They get less, um, more famous than me. They get less, that do criticize Islam. They get less requests for, for Muslims to talk, for, uh, talk to them than I do. So you think it's magically making Muslims more likely to talk to you because you... Magically? Uh, like, how, how's that, how's that a... How's that a logical cause of more people wanting to talk to you? I don't understand. Why do you think, like, what is, what, how's that, a, how's that a valid? I don't understand. Well, I don't know. Ask him, but, he, well, I, no, I get I'm, I'm trying to understand I'm it this way. That the, right. your, your profile I'm just telling is bigger. You, don't you, I'm, don't I'm you see? Telling you, I'm telling you, people with bigger profiles than me are getting yeah. less requests from, that are also anti-Islam, are getting less requests from, than me for, for Muslims to talk for Muslims to come and talk to them, right? Again, and a, a lot of people with higher profile than me, um, that's interesting. And with higher profile than me, who do get bigger requests than, than me for Muslims to talk to them, they're also using tactics that is uh, that is closer to mine. So, so they're also using what you're doing to sort of get more attention. Well, they're also Muslims. being a, lo a lot more like no not holding back stuff that people muslims will consider insulting kind of ways right um i think it might be because they are more okay so maybe maybe it's because they know that the intimidation tactic doesn't work so they want to try they want to stop the desecrations right uh -huh. maybe they they really want to stop the desecrations and they're trying a more peaceful friendly approach to try to convince me to why I'm doing is wrong. That's but it, the attempt to get me to stop, maybe the motivation might be because they want me to get to, they want to get to stop me doing that. Okay. I hadn't sort of yeah. thought of it that way, but interesting. Uh, I, I do. I still think. By the way, that I, motivation I is a guess. Profile. I don't know. What's that? That's a guess, by the way. I don't know. Right. I, I see. I mean, what I'm saying is also a guess. But I think just the, naturally speaking, like a bigger profile will get you more, you know, people who are willing to talk. Like, well, I'm an activist. A, I'm an activist. I need to get bigger profile to be able to do true. what yeah, I'm doing. I understand that. Yeah. But I'm yeah. saying, like, that might be the, the bigger reason rather than, you know, the, the way you're getting famous. But just the oh. fact that you're getting famous is more important than the way you're getting famous. Is my, I guess, my hypothesis. But let me respond to the other points you made. One of them was you said uh, what you're doing, uh, or I guess you said the the relationship you would have with Muslims in anywhere shouldn't be conditional upon you know you respecting their beliefs or you not insulting their their beliefs. I mean, here here's the thing with me. Like I fully believe in free speech. You know, in the U.S. we say free First Amendment. I guess also place we call it something else. But uh, I have no problem with that. Like, I, I understand your right. And I think it's fully your right. Like, I'm not here to tell you, you know, you don't have a right to do any of these things. But I think at some level, like, all the things you have a right to do, you don't do, right? Like, some of the things you have a right to do are not the things that you've ever done. Just because you have the right to those things doesn't mean you have to do it. You, you make the choice, you know, at the end of the day. And you making to do this, you sort of have to see the consequences and willing to accept the consequences and if you and if it makes you know a big uh plurality or majority of people sort of hate your guts and not willing to give you a you know fair ear to hear what you have to say because you did that 
I think like that's a bad consequence and it's not like good for your, uh, what do I say? Good for your activism. Although I, I see your other point about getting more Muslims to want to talk to you, but I, I think uh, it, it's still fair. It's a fair guess to, to think that a lot of people would be turned off by what you do and are not like, if they know this about you, they're, they're no more willing to give you a chance to talk to them or they'll just reduce you to the, the that guy who did this, right? Rather than that guy who has argued all these things and has so many, you know, good, good ideas and, you know, does a lot of Wait, good programs in different say languages. That, say that last point one more time, Shay. I guess what I'm trying to say is that they will reduce you to that 30 second clip. Like that's the only thing they will think you are. Like you're just a guy who desecrates the Quran. Rather than seeing you as the activist you are, you know, the, the author you are, you know, the, the hmm. you see my point? Like all these ideas, arguments you make, you're a liberal guy, you know, you, you make all these fine arguments, but more people will know you as the the guy who you know you know spits on the Quran or the bur burns it or whatever. Then, right? <laughs> then okay, people. I have, who... I'm writing this down so I can respond to later. Right. That's why I'm also, also uh, you said what you're doing makes people less likely to be extremists rather than more likely to be. I just like intuitively that doesn't make sense because people are very emotional about these. Like people who don't. You said you know this book says all these bad things. You know, you can enslave woman, you know, behead me, stuff like that. I think a majority of Muslims don't know or don't want to believe those things are in the Quran I or they, they don't accept it. They argue against it. You know, they have their arguments. I'm not here to like judge if, if they're right or wrong, but the thing I is know. at the end of the day, they don't believe that or they don't know about it. So that's not, so what I'm trying to say is that those types of believe people who believe in the Quran are not the ones who believe those things you said. Like the majority of Muslims don't want to kill you or they don't want to. Don't use the K word. YouTube doesn't right. like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I use don't... it as well. They don't want to end your life. So maybe say it like that. Right. They don't, they don't want to harm you. Honestly, majority of Muslims don't want to harm you. I mean, I you... know. God, that's... I've, heard you know this. I've heard you talk about this. I mean, other ex-Muslims, other atheists, you know, especially the right-winger ones, even Iranians, they, they have this sort of a caricature view of most Muslims, but it's not true. I mean, most Muslims are just random people. Yeah, what, who why are you telling me things that we agree on right now? No, I'm, I because a lot of people don't agree. A lot of Because, you know, the, the, the good example of you is that you and me, I think, agree on most things. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and this is very uncommon for Iranians to not be right-wingers who are, like, anti-Islam. So yeah. that I think that's pretty cool. I, I feel like I, I have more in common with you, and this might be the only thing we disagree about. Uh, but so uh, I the point I was yeah five yeah five points here that I need to respond to. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm so say, hmm? I'm not finished. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, you're saying that you're not making them more likely to be extremists, but I think that's not the, that's not the case because these people are emotional people wh whose belief in Quran is very emotional and when you sort of insult it like that as they would see it emotionally you know offends them and it makes them more likely to sort of buy into the narrative that an extremist would have or get closer to that so, all right go ahead all right so in regards to you saying like oh uh, I, res uh, I agree with free speech um, and you know, I think that you should be able to say this. I'm just saying that I'm not arguing against your right to do that. So. I here's the thing: I never, I didn't ever make, I never made this about the free speech. Um, I never claimed that my free speech was violated because of these people telling me that I shouldn't do what I do. Have I ever, have I ever made that point? No, I was Did just I trying to make this. I right. agree with free speech. Uh, look, personally, because you I know, don't know me I know, but I'm just saying that I'm. I'm just saying that when people come to me and like Armin, uh, I agree. I think you have every right to do this. However, this is why you shouldn't do it. I'm like, yeah, I never like people disagreeing with me. I never thought like, oh, I never made the point like, oh, what about what happened to free speech? What happened to free speech? You know what I mean? Like, I never told people that they can't disagree with me because I have the right to desecrate the Quran. I know that. A lot of the people um, 
you know, might argue that you're not the right. Some people might argue that, but I'm not one of those. I know. So I wanted to make. I know. I know. I'm talking about your type of people, right? Who say like, Armin, you have the right to do this, but I'm like, why do you? I, we are on the same page with regards to rights. This is not about. This is not about rights and free speech. I know. I did with with. I'm, I didn't make this about a free speech. Yes, we're talking about whether it's the right thing to do, not whether about the right, if I have the right to do it or not. We all agree. I mean, the same people agree that I have the right to do this. The conversation right now is whether this is a good strategy or not. You're that's absolutely right. 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 So I was trying to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, I know. And that's why I never go around and say like, oh, look at all these people who disagree with me. What happened to my freedom of speech? I, I, ne I didn't do that, right? So I just, I also want to point out that I, yeah, I don't do that, right? Um, so with regards to, but, but then you said you have to accept the consequences. No, I do not have to accept the consequences. The whole point of- the whole, in the well, sense, oh, go ahead. Yeah. The whole point of activism is for me to change the consequences. That's why we're activists, because we don't like the consequences and we are trying to change the consequences, right? So no, I do not, I, uh, I know j being aware of the consequences and being able to know what the con consequences are gonna be uh, does not necessarily mean that we have to accept the consequences, right? Um, and okay, so you're not, that was the second point. The third point that you say, like, people see you spitting on the Quran or burning the Quran, and they reduce you to the, that, even though you wrote a book and you do podcasts and you do debates. Uh, but that's that will be the thing that they will reduce you to. Again, I have seen that it's exactly the opposite. Okay, what happens effectively is a lot of people, a lot of people who had no, because again, my profile is not that big, right? Um, m m m but what happens is that when I desecrate the Quran, right, or do something, uh, something else like that, a lot of Muslims take that and then they go and show it to their following, to their Muslim following. And I look at what these ex-Muslims are doing. Look at it. Look how disgusting these people are. And what they effectively done is that they're introducing their audience to me. And then what happens is that a lot of their audience that had never had a clue, they didn't, they weren't aware of my books, my podcasts, my debates, or me spitting on the Quran or anything like that. And now, it it didn't go from the potential of them knowing about my other work, but now they're only knowing about my desecration of the Quran. It it was it was never like that. It went from them never knowing about me at all to now they knowing about me, and. It, some of them end up coming out and checking me out. And because of that desecration of the Quran and because of their own content creators introducing me to them, now all of a sudden they're being introduced to a whole bunch of other things that I do. That is what's effectively happening here. So that was number three. Oh my God, I can't read my own handwriting. Um, oh, so... Yes. So what we so you're saying that the extremists like because they're so emotional about this. This is first of all you're saying intu intuitively you think that this is going to cause more extremists. Extremists, right? And I can tell you that intuition is one of the worst way of coming up to conclusions, right? You have to actually look at what's happening rather than relying on your intuition. And what we actually have seen is that these kind of tactics tactics do on a net scale desensitize people so yes they're very sensitive about it but doing this on a mass scale by a lot of people ends up desensitizing people so and that sensitivity is required for creating more extremists so if we are desensitizing people we're basically uh, taking the wind out of the sail for a lot of the, like, these extremist groups, like they need people to get angry all the time over many things. And if we remove, if we keep removing excuses for them to take moderate Muslims and make them angry um, because they're desensitized, there's going to be less excuses for them to recruit. Right. And uh, number five. Don't know what's okay. So you said a lot of Muslims don't know what's in the Quran. So are you saying like I am 
um, I'm going to be, when I said I will be Muslims, allies, and friends, and cooperate with them, even though they're legitimizing a book that promotes these things, and you said, well, the, most of them do not know or do not endorse what's in this book, I agree with that, um, and that's why I'm not also making it a condition, right? The, so, for example, let's say you're right, so you could say that about me as well, right? Let's say they think that Armin, your desecration of the Quran is harmful. You think it's not harmful, but it's harmful, right? So in their mind, the way they should look at me is the way I look at them. I think them, like saying, oh, yeah, this is a holy book come from God, even though they don't actually promote, the, I, they think that this book promotes good messages and it's like it's not harmful. I think this book is harmful, but they're unknowingly, unknowingly legitimizing a harmful book, or giving authority to it and promoting it, unknowingly being harmful. And because they're unknowingly being harmful, I that's why I don't make it a condition, right? For me to work with them, right? So from their perspective, they look at looking at me, even if they think me desecrating the Quran is harmful. They should see it as me unknowingly promoting harm. So they know in their perspective that I'm being promoting something harmful, but unknowingly I'm doing something that is harmful. So based on the same standards, based on much less standards than uh, lower standards than I, uh, so basic, I have much lower standards for accepting them. But if they, based on with the same reasoning, they should accept me as an ally because even if I am being harmful, that is not the intention. I mean, I don't, again, I am not being harmful, but I'm just looking at it from their perspective. Does it, do you, you know what I'm saying? Does that make right, sense? Right, right, I understand. Yeah, right. right. All right, so I think um, you have some of these scenarios you described early on on your points, like the extremist goes to the moderate and says, oh, look at, look what this guy did, you know, come join us, you know. And there's gonna be those you know, people who are going to be like, oh, I've never heard of him. Let me go look him up. And they come look you up and they watch a few hours of your content and they're like, oh, this guy makes sense. There's going to be some of those people. I don't deny it. But 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 you clearly don't think that's the only type of people who will react, right? Like, obviously, a great majority of people won't react at all. They'll be like, oh, okay. Yes. Go eat breakfast. Like, but uh, that is, sorry, can I just interrupt real quickly? That, that happens more than people that would have potentially again i'm not that famous right? right so like if you compare the number of people that would have potentially found me and only know known more about my books and podcasts and debates mm -hmm. uh, but now on but but because of me desecrating the quran they they missed that opportunity and only now know about my desecration that number is much much smaller then this other number, even though this other number is also small, but it's much larger than the number of people that would have never, ever known who I am, but right. now know me and now know my other work as well. But I'm sort of imagining another uh, another reaction to that. And and people, mm -hmm. when when those extremists, obviously they have, a, they have a goal of doing that, like creating a clip of you and say, oh, look what this guy did. There's going to be a few people out there who are not really into this whole islamic activism and now they might be more likely to do it because they sort of they're sort of activated or through their emotions Wait, sorry say that again are. so these moderates or these moderates who see you doing that are activated through their emotions they, now they want to you know do more islamic activism or now they're radicalized or what have you and i mean this is not going to be the only thing that does that but i just think polarizing the society through this because uh Especially in your Persian, your Persian uh, uh, channel, there's you're basically dealing within a country. With the, there's a plurality or a majority of Muslims. At some point, you are. It is causing like it is polarizing, and making it more, you know, ma making it more polar is not going to be helpful to any side. I, think I mean, if you if, I, if you have each other. If you apply the same standards to Muslim, to them, then we should like ban the Quran. Do you want to ban the Quran? Well, if you could, but I don't think you you're going to be able to, right? I'm I not, don't want. To, wait, not, no, I know, I know, but I'm saying I don't want to ban the Quran. Well, even if you did, you can't, right? Like we have that would to, be the polarizing yeah. thing. If you ban it the Quran, be, yeah, 
but I'm saying that, well, exactly. There's a lot of them. You just, you sort of have to sort of look at reality and what's going on, like what's the reality on the ground and sort of shape your strategy from there. Like we are not like on equal grounds with them. There's a lot of them and there isn't that many of us. So if you want to start a right. war with them, you, you know, it's, it's, it's like trying to start a war with America. This is not going to look pretty. Okay, okay. First of all, Muslims are in some places they're a minority, in some places they're the majority, right? I was and that's specifically speaking about Iran your with your Persian channel. Right. We have to introduce Iranians to the idea, Muslim Iranians, that it's okay for people to disrespect your ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter the numbers. I, I mean, technically, it seems like they're the minority right now. Wait, would your argument change if we could show that they're the minority now? <laughs> because I, I don't think... I, don't I don't mean, think, I saw that poll, I but I don't really... But, uh, but uh, I don't really buy it that much. I mean, the fact that the argument is based on who's the majority shows the flaw in your reasoning to me, right? To me, that the fact the thing, that... You have to have some pragmatism. You, it's, we're not trying to oppress them, but if we can stop them from oppressing us, why shouldn't we try, right? Like, they are yeah. the ones who are oppressing They are the ones with power and guns right now in Iran, you know, arresting people for blasphemy, sometimes, you know, once in a while killing them for blasphemy. So, But that's a very dangerous precedent to set. Basically, you're saying, like, okay, 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 be nice to us as long as we behave. What you're doing right now is basically creating a conditional you know it's like taking a it's, it's a hostage situation it's basically telling like you basically have to dance their dance and behave the way they do and what you're saying what you're doing is that you are legitimizing the punishment of us if we misbehave no, basically I think that's you are giving that's, that's no, not I, what I think like I think that was that gives credibility. So here's here's what happens, right? If we say like, oh, here's a good atheist and here's a bad atheist. Oh, look at this good atheist. Be more like this good atheist. He's like he doesn't insult Islam. He doesn't desecrate the Quran. He just like and like in a, like just talks about it in a very calm and you know respectful way and this is this is a good atheist right and that's why you should accept that's why you shouldn't behead us because we have good atheists do you know what that argument is suggesting that argument is suggesting that it's okay to kill the atheist no, who is no, no, that's not I know, okay. no no i know you're, you're not saying that okay but it's suggesting that Atheists should be accepted when they don't step out of line. But your oh, like oh my God, look, Armin, you desecrated the Quran. See, this is why they have apostasy laws. Like as if, but right, I, I, I know, I know you're not saying that. I know you're not saying that. Yeah, I'm not saying that at all. I know you're I not saying that. Saying but I'm that. saying, but I'm saying that this is gives could give okay legitimacy to what. To blasphemy laws and apostasy laws, because you're basically you're agreeing with the Muslims that okay, do if you say here for example, let me give an example. Okay, a lot of people say, hey, we should accept gay people because being gay is not a choice; it's natural; it's not something they decided, right? Right. Uh, so, given that they had no choice in it, this should not be something that becomes criminal or you know illegal in any way, right? I hate that argument. Yeah, you know why? I, I, I think that's a bullshit that, argument. I'm sorry. I hate that. I, yeah, be careful. I hate that argument because it suggests because that even you can if have it a was, choice. yeah, yeah, even if it was a choice, they're not harming anybody. The right. reason why it shouldn't be criminal, the reason why it's because okay, none of your business. Because, yeah, because they're not harming anybody, right? Yeah. So by making that argument that it should be allowed because it's natural, because it's not their choice, you're promoting a, a standard of ethics and morality that is missing, that is not based on harm reduction, mm -hmm. right? Can I respond to that? I think that's yeah, actually a really good point you raised there. Uh, I agree with you. That's a bad argument, but it's a bad argument that worked, especially in the United States, right? A lot of people really bought into that argument. A lot of people, it really happened quick, like in a, in a matter of a few years, people just heard that argument and they were like, you know what, that 
that, that, that sounds good. Yeah, that like, if, oh, it was not their choice. I, I guess we're just going to have to accept it. And now the majority of people accept, you know, LGBT community. And that's great. So if you can sort of make a bad argument and make the public go with you, I mean, you know, Merry Christmas. Why not? <laughs> I don't like bad arguments that work sh in the short term. I'm not going to... It's not a short term. You think, oh, so you think LGBT no. people are going to lose their rights, you know, in five years because they made no, a bad no, no. No, I'm just saying that for every bad argument that works, there are better arguments that work even better. Yeah, I don't know. Especially in this case, I don't think you, you have a point there. That this argument may I don't want really I don't well. want to be I don't want to be intellectually dishonest for short term goals. I have actually a lot what of, of what videos. if you're saving lives? I mean, geez, nope. to have some pragmatism, Armin. No, pragmat I'm looking yeah, I'm looking at the long long term return on my investment. So, so yeah, right. that's what I was thinking too. I, I was I was gonna say earlier that you sort of see the big picture really well, but right. I feel like you're sort of not good at zooming in and seeing some of the small stuff too. I mean, you were telling me, well, if you if you tell them, you know, it's you you can be a good atheist and they won't harm you. And I mean, if 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 I'm saving like two lives with that argument, if 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 I'm saving two people who are you know who are gonna be yeah. harmed. So, you know, sort of saving them from harming themselves or, or saving, you know, not yeah, letting them any, be harmed any, by other people? Isn't that worth it? I mean, any is your you picture make, more important than those two lives? Any decision you make, there's going to be lives lost. Any method that you pick. So you're okay with that? No. Did I say that? Uh, no, I mean, but I'm saying that whatever... No, I'm just saying whatever path you take, there are going. there's going to be cost, major right. cost. Sometimes in lives. Don't you want to like make? You wanna can I as finish? As you can? Oh, God, sorry. can I finish my thought, please? Yes. There's no solutions. There's only trade-offs. So it's not because whatever path you take, you if you take my path or if you take your path, I could point to your path and like, oh, look, your path um, has some life loss because of it, right? And I could like look at you and be like, look, look what you did. Lives are lost because of what you the path that you chose. But my my path will also have loss, a life loss. Every path will have life loss. I think it's very uncharitable for you to think that I don't care about the life loss. It's not about is what it's about. That's not what I said, Armin. Come on. No, you you ask me. You you know you should know the answer to that question. You ask me, Armin. Do do you not? Is that do you don't it's care about? It? Wait, let me. I was trying to make. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, but you say you don't care. Like, what do you think? Do you think I don't care about life loss? Well, of course you do, but I'm, what I'm saying right. is that it's, so it's, it's about it's not about it's not about absolute solutions. It's about comparing the trade-offs and looking at the le the least harmful path. Exactly, that's what I think. Yeah, that's right. Think, so you pointing out to examples of life loss as a as a way to say my path is uh, the wrong path is completely missing the point because every path will have life loss. Every path will. Have but that life doesn't follow. So be here, basically, what I'm doing is uh, being honest. Is playing it safe, right? I'm playing it safe, but you're I'm not, saying my path will have less life loss, even though it will have, even though it will have life loss, it will have less less life loss. Okay, please go ahead and argue for that point. I did I already. Know. I told you that this is taking the wind out of the sail of extremists. I'm thinking this desensitization will cause less radicalism. Uh, I think normalizing dissent will make will lead to accepting of dissent. I think like when it comes to m introducing more uh, Muslims or Hindus or whatever into accepting people not conditional on on us passionately disagree uh, not to be silent or not showing our disagreements in whatever way. If we normalize that, it will lead to uh, less reactionary movements. It will also less lead to less far right radical groups being able to use these hot um, sensitive um, issues and a way to get a reaction out of these communities o on the long term. Yes, it may maybe in the small, in the short run, you're going to be like, oh, I mean, here's the cost to what you did. Here's the cost to what you did. But at the whole, like we have seen that these methods in the long term, it desensitizes communities. And these desensitization is not just in our favor. It's also in the favor of the communities that have been desensitized because this is a bigger cost even to them than it is to us. Right, but here's the thing: some of these, some of these methods, uh, desensitizing. It's it's sort of like normal. Like let's say, if Muslims were not so reactionary, you you probably would never feel the need to try to desecrate the. Yeah, because there wouldn't be a problem to solve. 
exactly. But what I'm saying is that it's, I, I honestly, I don't think it's a problem now. Like I can get away with not burning the Quran for, for the rest of my life and I'll be fine. Right. Oh my it's God. Not one of those that, uh, I mean, it, it is, it, it's it is not true about the Quran. It, we have only not, not the Quran, Quran, but I'm saying the freedoms, like the sort of freedoms I need right now in Iran, for example, or in other Muslim countries. You're missing the point. Go ahead. You're missing. You're missing the point. It's not specifically about the ability. Like we don't like. I so I. Oof, I really. I really need to get my desecration of the. I need the freedom to desecrate. It's not about desecrating the Quran. It's not about we really want. We really desire to desecrate the Quran, and you have to give us that freedom. Okay, it's what it represents. The same way that what hijab represents. Okay, it's not just about like oh I really want this. I really want the freedom of not putting this on my head. Like this is what I need the most, right? No, it's about the. What it, if you have a government that gets to tell you that you have to wear this? What is your position in that society if if a government tells you that you have to? This is the clothes that you wear. I get to tell you what you wear because of you, you being a woman, right? So it's again, it's not just about just a piece of cloth on top of your head. It's about what a lot more and what, what that cloth represents, right? Huh? So for me, like if I desecrate the Quran, I, I say I have to be able to desecrate the Quran. You have to be able to give me that freedom. You have to accept me desecrate the Quran. It's not because I need to desecrate the Quran. It's because if you do give me that freedom it shows me the level of freedom i have in the society it shows me the conditions that you put on my expression as a whole not just with desecrating the quran but the authority that you have or the intimidation tactics that you get to use depending on the place on what i have how of what and how i get to express myself it's about a bigger thing it's not just about the quran itself right well here's the thing i mean i think we should focus more on the on the that the red lines that are more necessary, like as an ex-Muslim, you're not allowed to exist in most of the Muslim countries, right? Like, it's it's illegal to be you, right? That's one of those, kind of, like if, if you can sort of uh, normalize that, that's something very necessary. Like a lot of people are in the closet for that. Yeah, like, we want to make that, yeah, we want to. Right, so that's thing. a necessary one. Like the Quran, like you can sort of get away with not doing it and you'll be fine. But not allowed to exist, right? That's that's obviously a much bigger one. So you sort of have we, to reflect. We are you doing that, but no, we are doing saying, that no, by desecrating. Right? We are doing that by desecrating the Quran. Do you want to know how? Right, but you're paying a bigger. You want to know how? You to. You, you're paying a bigger price. Than I you will. Need. I will pay that price for 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 this because we, do you know how I am? Okay, so here's. Let me tell you how this works. Okay, this is another. No, I understand. Again, I'm, I'm not disagreeing let, with you. I'm just. Can I say this? Pay a lesser price. I I will pay, I will pay that price as well. But can I can I just give you the reason why this also? Okay, so here's the thing. Imagine like we have a situation that you say like. Oh, I I was a Muslim. Now I'm not a Muslim, and that was like shocking. <sighs> I mean, I used to know. I used to be in a situation that that was shocking. People can leave Islam like that was unimaginable, shocking, insulting. You know, something on call, something that needs to be shut down. Like I was in that position at some point as a Muslim. That would have been shocked to my very core. For I guess you're an extremist. I was just, I was just, I was just very okay. Hold on, but that was like, yeah. I'm not. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't go and carry out anything against that person. But I would think, I would think that that is like wow. Okay, and I knew that I lived in a society that even people that weren't like practicing Muslims uh, did not consider that people could actually leave Islam. Okay. I, and I grew up in a lib even though I was very religious, I grew up in a liberal environment, and I never heard of the idea of being suggested that somebody could be a Muslim and stop being a Muslim the next day. Okay, that was a shocking. That was like a, a shocking idea to even consider. But imagine that those people that consider that shocking and continue to consider that shocking now being introduced to me instead. Like, hey, I left Islam, and hey, I also piss on your Quran. Right, mm. so if I if you are now my sh my standard of being shocked, now all of a sudden that person that just left Islam is not that shocking anymore, right? Like if if I am the shock, if I am the shock, if I am like look at this guy, he's 
eating the Quran, he's spitting at the Quran, he's burning the Quran. Holy crap, what the but hell? You're this a deal breaker what? to them. No, but but what happens is that now the person that comes and like, I'm not desecrating the Quran. I just left Islam, but I'm not gonna desecrate. I'm not gonna do these things that this Armin is doing. Now it's not like, okay, fine. As long as you're not like Armin, as long as you're not like Armin, we can accept you. So in a by by making the standard of shock a lot higher, we are normalizing what used to be shocking. Do you understand? So yeah, I see your point. Like there is, so you're the enemy now, not them, is what you're saying. Basically. You're basically, yeah, kind of. You're becoming yeah. the shield of of these other well, people. Not, I'm not, not a, trying to make it. I'm not that like me and a lot of people like me. You know what I mean? Right, so I'm right. not trying. I, I, I'm I, not I, trying to exaggerate my influence. Yeah, no, I understand that. No, right. I mean your your influence is there. I'm not going to deny it. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, I I love your work. You know, I listen to uh -huh. it all the time. Yeah, thank you. But not this. <laughs> Particular job though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. how, how did you find me? Uh, I mean, I've known. I I knew your book from a few years ago, but but then I saw you uh, on YouTube. Okay, but okay. other other ways too. Anyways, uh, so you're saying that this is. I'm just making a big shock so other people can can be normal. But I'm saying is that. I have to go soon. Okay. All right. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I just took a call. I need to go. Okay, this is important. Right. But let's talk it soon again. Okay, this was All good. Right. I'm okay. gonna. I'm gonna talk to you now. All right, talk to you later, man. Take care. Bye. Bye.